working with just a restaurant that happens to be kosher, and I consider ourselves one of the top smokehouses here in New York. We're gonna get ready our uh, famous pastrami. This is the briskets we use here at um, the smokehouse, and this is gonna be done for our pastrami as well. Most of this is a uh, source from the Midwest, uh, brought to here. See how it's like a nice fat cap. If you look, look at the marbling as well. We're gonna talk about what goes in our pastrami brine and what does not go in our pastrami brine. Pastrami is set to use a rub. Pastrami is not a piece of meat. It's a coriander, black pepper based rub that you put on the meat once the meat is done to pickle. You got our pink salt over here and this sort of ensures that no bacteria affects the meat. Here's sugar. We got our fresh gar garlic here, some honey. Here we have a blend of spices, which obviously, you know, is co coriander based, grinded black pepper. Pastrami is so big in New York. When they came over from Europe, a lot of the Jewish people, you know, they opened up the delis. That was an affordable way of, you know, people to eat. Brisket will go in here and see you in two weeks. So once the pastrami is done curing after two weeks, this is what it'll look like pretty much. So this is what ju just went in, and this is something that's been looking like that has been pickled for two weeks. We'll come back after a week and a half, we'll start to check uh, the briskets. Um, at that point already, it's pretty much pickled as they say. So we'll let it dry overnight, and we'll go ahead and rub the meat, and we'll put in the smoker again, anywhere from a 12 to 18 hour cook. You're pretty much cu curing it sort of to, to preserve it and then you're making that piece of meat in something so delicious, almost like an umami in its own version, pretty much. So when you take the Texas style, then you take the juice and the deli, when you combine those two, it's just you're getting a phenomenal, amazing product and just something that people obsess with. So pretty much we come into the morning, we start the fires every Sunday morning for the rest of the whole week. This here is our wood room. You know, being that in New York, we have to have a fire rated proof room. So every week our wood will come, our delivery will come in, calm down the chute and go straight into here. We'll put it in every week. So I'll take some small, small pieces. This way it's easy to catch. And then I'll look for some nice pieces as well. Something that's not too heavy versus something that's, that's more, more wet. Pretty much we're doing our standard, building like a house almost. That's what we're doing. As far as a fi fire starter, we got, we got plenty. So this is pretty much our extra uh, paper that we use to wrap our, you know, the briskets. So this is a perfect to start a fire. It's oily, it's greasy. What we're doing it, we're using a blend of woods here. You know, here on the East Coast, it's uh, hard to get just post oak or only cherry or woods that I would, I would ideally love to use. So we have a mix of like, you know, it's cherry, it's oak, it's hickory, ash, blended woods here on the East Coast. Essentially, the fire starts on the bottom here. We'll go into the back of the smoker, come out and around and convect all around the smoker. I do tend to see a difference when I'm cooking on an offset for when I'm cooking in that, but it gives that a phenomenal product and allows us pretty much in a small kitchen to do a large quantity of meat. This here is a kosher brisket. If you see over here, the symbol, the, the, the place that certifies it. In kosher, there's something called glot, and, and when it comes to meat, and that's sort of the highest level. People who are orthodox generally only eat glot. What, what it means is pretty much that, that the, the lungs are pure and there are no you know, holes at all in the lungs, and it's just a, a pure, pure, uh, healthy animal. I would say probably from every hundred uh, steer, probably 30 of them are good. And it's not that the other ones are bad, it's just you know, our requirements that the animal can't be injured, can't be sick, you know, we just have a small ratio of what we could slaughter. So being that you know we can't use pork, pork isn't kosher, so it forces us to, to use brisket in innovative ways in other dishes. A few of the ways that we use our brisket, it's whether it's our sliced brisket, whether it's our chopped brisket, our pulled beef sandwich, our pulled beef tacos, our pulled beef fries, or it's our pastrami, and you know it goes in our beans as well. So pretty much we're getting a bunch of dishes that we're getting from the same cut of meat. So right over here, you know, as you see, I'm squ squaring off the brisket. This is gonna be used for pulled pull beef, you know, because we can't use uh, pork, pork isn't uh, kosher. So this is our rub over here, which is pretty much uh, salt, pepper, and paprika is what it is. There's no sugar, no onion, no garlic powder. We really want the beef, you know, we have this beautiful piece of brisket that we really want it to shine first and foremost, is what we want to do. Since in kosher, we have the salt salting process once the meat's uh, slaughtered and, and deveined, by default, our meats happen to be much more saltier, you know, so we automatically have to compensate in our rubs. 
you know, we are a kosher restaurant or under the OK kosher certifications. So obviously, besides for having a mashkiach, you know, someone who supervises at all times, you know, while, while it's open, we also have the actual the head rabbi usually a couple of times a week. Every package is cryopacked. It's got a label, and a lot of times it has even inside, under the cryopack, there are more labels. But besides the meat, we're also going to check all ingredients, and we're going to see that every ingredient is is up to our standards of what we require. And we're going to verify that all those things are being done on a daily basis. Kosher barbecue, it's not that common. You know, I can't just order my, my meat and expect it to come at a specific time or specific cuts, you know, based on kosher holidays or other times or... You know, cuts that aren't available or that you fact that you're limited in the vendors or like price increases. The fact that we're paying so so much for meat and we're, you know, that, you know, our food cost is probably higher than any other uh, kosher restaurant when it comes to food cost. These are lamb ribs. You can see it nice and fatty. Over the years, we've learned that we can't only smoke brisket and short ribs. We need to have other items as well. Generally, when you uh, sm smoke lamb, it takes a Kind of that gaminess away that you would have on lamb. You know, it's delicious, but super, super, super fatty. For some people, it's like an, it's, it isn't a common item. You know, pork ribs is an item that they're used to having. So it's something that they really enjoy, the lamb ribs. I think part of my obsession with bar barbecue is the fact that I never really, you know, had non kosher barbecue, didn't know what it tastes like. And we heard of this guy, his name is Ari White, known as the Wandering Q. And he was the first kosher barbecue pop up. I got obsessed with the art of wood-fired cooking. Over the years, we sort of, you know, we won Brisket King 2016, and we won Rip King as well. We were fortunate enough, you know, to cook with Aaron Franklin in Austin. He cooked us some kosher briskets, hung out with him and Daniel Vaughn. It's been a crazy, crazy ride. These are our beef short ribs, AKA dino ribs as well. Um, we probably sell out of these almost every day. We don't need this membrane in the back where it's not gonna do us any good. As far as the lamb, it's more of a unique flavor. You know, it's fatty as well. I'm much, much, much more unique. This is just in terms of beef, you know, all that richness, you just don't get with lamb. It's our most expensive item, but it's our least money-making item, because it's just a super expensive cut. There's only six of these per steer. So this is served by the pound. Each rack here has three bones. We'll generally, we'll cut out the bone in the middle, and we'll turn this into two, two pieces. This way, it usually comes out between a pound and a half, two pounds uh, per order. Same rub as the brisket, as our back ribs, as our lamb ribs. Oh, these will cook for like uh, eight to 12 hours at least. So the burn end, so we have our whole brisket that we smoke. Once that brisket is done, we will take off the second cut, the fatty part on top that we had shown earlier. It's our house bar barbecue sauce. And it's obviously a very, it's a tomato-based uh, sweet sauce is what it is. There's a lot of ketchup, tomato paste, um, honey, sugar, molasses, mix that up. This is really an item, you know, for everyone, really, who likes sauce and likes stuff that's extra smoky. And this will go back in the smoker for another uh, another two hours in the smoker. It'll go back, so it'll get crispy, sweet, sweet, extra smoky. Woo! This actual item was a mistake on the menu. I was hungry one day and I wanted to make a new item. So we came up with our uh, version of the smoke fried chicken sandwich. And this is probably our biggest seller on the menu. And we use obviously thigh here because we believe in thigh over breast. So much more moist and flavorful. You know, a lot of people why they don't like thigh because they're usually eating the gristle. Part of our process that will pretty much remove that. Pretty much our rub for the chicken is uh, it's the mixture between the salt, pepper, paprika, brown sugar, cayenne, garlic, onion. I saw a video of a really good fried chicken sandwich on YouTube. I can't remember what. I'm, you know what? I said, let me try my own version of a fried chicken sandwich. And that day, the, the fried chicken sandwich pretty much was born. We'll pretty much smoke it um, three quarters of the way through. Okay. Ha, ha, ha. So here we have our seasoned flour. So obviously being that we're kosher, you know, we can't use any buttermilk, any dairy. So we actually use coconut milk. We don't go too crazy with, with our flour seasoning because we have so much fl flavor already from the smoke itself. Because the smoke gives it another element of flavor that, you know, you really don't get in other places. Look at that, it's beautiful. It's a really short, short fry, really. Finished out with a little bit of horseradish mayo, a uh, pickle, a little bit of hot sauce that we make in house. That's our biggest selling sandwich by far and away more than any other sandwich.
So we're in the afternoon now and we're pretty much gonna get ready for dinner. We got one pulled beef sandwich and one half pound of brisket fatty. Vamalos, let's go. As well, if you wanna sit as well. Cool. All right, I'll take your order in a minute, okay? We're gonna start pulling out uh, meats out of the smokers. We're not going by by a thermometer or really going by how it feels and when you literally when you press you know the meat over here it literally if, if i wanted to i could literally press right through you see that right through you know i'm fortunate enough that i'm able to do uh, what i love and it provides a, a you know living for my family and i'm able to bless them to do that and, and to work here and we're close to home it's, uh, it's amazing we happen to be kosher barbecue, but we have plenty of people who come in that aren't kosher and say this is like one of the best barbecues I've ever had. New York should be the barbecue, whatever you want to do. We're not tied in or grandfathered in to a, uh, you know, a specific region of barbecue. We're, we're free to do whatever we want. For example, being that we're Jewish, so we sort of, you know, dwindled in like the deli and the pastrami style. I think anybody is in the food industry is nuts, you know, to work 80 hours a week, to miss all their family holidays, that you factor in, you know, the bar barbecue version of it, which is pretty much, just, which is an overnight uh, business, that's like as important as, you know, during the day. So the fact that you're in that business, you're nuts. But I think the fact that, you know, one of the reasons why we're here today and why we have that name is just because of all that, you know, meticulous craziness. Anthony Bourdain was saying, he said, Barbecue may not be the road to world peace, but it's a start, and that's the truth. People go to Texas, the Franklins, the Louis Millers, or to wherever these places, these old, these, uh, these meccas, it just makes them happy.